and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some more standard 2020, this time with Selesnia midrange. You all know me, I really like my Selesnia decks, and unfortunately Selesnia isn't the most powerful stuff in uh, decks in standard with uh, the um, sideboard slots really kind of being uh, limited. You know, you don't really have things that are good against Field of the Dead, for example, in your Selesnia colors and... Um, a lot of other decks go over the top of them, but here with standard 2020, there is still some field of the dead a little bit around, but not too much. And it's just best of one. So we don't really have to worry about not really having a good sideboard. And so all we're going to be doing here is just playing our monsters deck, our, our creature deck, where we're trying to just curve out and, um, overpower our opponents. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So as you can see, we're, we're almost all creatures besides our three Planeswalkers, the three key parts in here. We got our two Vivians and Gideon Blackblade, with Gideon Blackblade being really good against control decks, not so great against aggro decks. Um, so, you know, like that's just kind of your um, trade-off with playing best of one. But then we have our, our two Vivians. So the Arkbar Ranger is just really strong whenever we have creatures in play of just making our creatures real big, give them trample. It's also removal with the minus three. Y'all know I really like this card. It's it's a very quality card. The Champion of the Wilds gives us some extra gas. Mostly this is going to be better against uh, control decks for the most part. Um, but then also allows us to play our creatures at instant speed, which can be benef beneficial since we're going with Nightpack Ambushers. I decided to go with like the Ambushers with Tulsimer, um, like that interaction there. Uh, also definitely thought about like shifting Ceratops though for this slot, um, Nullhide Ferox as well, Beast Whisper could be a card too, but <clears throat> ended up with just going with the Ambushers there. Voracious Hydra gives us some utility just like Vivian, so we got some more removal there, and then we have some utility, other utility cards like Knight of Autumn that can just kind of do a lot of things. This is really like our, our Swiss Autumn Knight there. And then we have Crowl Harpooner to help against flying decks, which you run into those with the best of one, like the Azorius Flyers. You can uh, run into those, but uh, Vivian can also give your creatures reach as well, because we kind of need Vivian to give this Oketra reach, because that Oketra definitely seems like it should have reach. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to be curving out. As you can see, like, so we are playing the standard 2020, of course, which is best of one, but you can see here I have a full sideboard with 15 different one ofs because we have uh, Arcbow Ranger. The minus five ability does allow us to play a sideboard there. So we have like <clears throat> a cheap way to get rid of flyers with Harpooner. We have, if we want two flying blockers plus also like seven mana to like exile a creature and leave a one one behind, we can do that with a Hanged Executioner. We got Loaming Shaman, which I think Loaming Shaman, for the most part, I want to target. Uh, have this to be able to target myself against a long control deck, like where they've already killed like a whole bunch of creatures and everything, and I have like a big graveyard. We can go get Loaming Shaman, take all the cards in our graveyard, shuffle them back into our library, so that uh, then we'll be uh, really increase the quality of our draw steps, you know, because then we'll have like still the same number of lands that were in in the library, but then just a whole bunch of more spells in there as well course a knight of autumn for artifacts and enchantments a beast whisper for one a card advantage engine golgari raiders and shifting ceratops can give us some haste damage in there cavalier of dawn can destroy any non-land permanent so it can destroy a planeswalker or anything like that um cavalier of thorns gives us a good reach body that also ramps us and everything ronus can be some a bunch of surprise damage with its trigger uh, for, and also give your creatures vigilance to help win win a race as well. Foragers is some life gain. Gain a life for each creature in your graveyard. So we got some life gain there. Same with Luxodon and Chan Life Channer. So we have those two options for life gain. If we have a bunch of creatures in play, uh, we can grab... Uh, we can have... Viv but, you know, like we're like real low and like maybe a burn spell or two finishes, finishes, us, finishes us off. We can have Vivian grab this Life Chanter to to uh, kind of reset our life total. Uh, Tulsmer is also life gain and removal and multiple bodies. And then we got a couple of removal spells with Golem and Hydra. All right. So let's try our decks here. 
So all right, so we're gonna be doing ranked standard 2020. So we are now in Mythic. And we'll see how Selesnia Midrange does for us. Hopefully it's pretty good. Yeah, so why is the deck called Midrange? Um, it's basically, Midrange decks are, are decks that are uh, can can assume a different role depending on what they're playing. If you're playing an aggressive deck, you can assume the control role. And if you're playing against a control deck, you can assume the aggressive role. And so it gets it's a deck that so therefore it's a deck that uh, can shift its game plan depending on what the opponent is doing. And it's not something that's just um, a linear deck trying to do one thing. So Big Vivian is not in standard 2020. So Big Vivian will be rotating. All right, we have a nice... Hey, what's up, Frisky Biscuits with the Mythic Hype? Thank you much. Thank you so much there, Biscuits. Big time Mythic Hype cheers. I appreciate that. Yep, M19 is going to be rotating out. So I attacked first because if I play Vivian first and they counter Vivian, then the Cutthroat grows. I guess it'd still be a, a three-two though. Wild animals I like. People, not so much. Kind of expecting another Cutthroat here. Yep. So I didn't want to minus and then let them kill my Vivian. So I'd like to draw an untap land. You have to do Thank better you. than that. All things begin and end. All right, that was not spectacular. This thing, whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Okay. That's unfortunate. That didn't work out. Ah, not again. Oh, it's draw your second turn. Draw your second card. That did not work out for me at all. I 
and that Vivian. The Vivian not finding me a creature didn't really help either. Please just have another land in hand. Uh. Oh, I didn't I didn't update this. Well, that was ugly. Thought whenever we resolve the Vivian, we were going to be doing just fine, but. Things did not go my way at all. Oh, then 0 and 1, sorry. I wrote that down the wrong way. I kind of wish I would have just saved the Kral Harpooner for later. Hey, Judge. It's almost like it's better that you go second than, than the Harpooner gets to kill something. I walk a righteous path. Share in my light. So given the Puck Collector lifelink... Or, uh, they could double block Pelt Collector, but I will I will trade Pelt Collector for Imperion Eagle. That's a good trade for me. That's not great. Hey, what's up, Rockburn? Hopefully we draw a Forest and get to play Vivian. Fourth sub of the day. Um... I believe in you, friend. All right, so we're going to make Pell Collector indestructible. And yeah, they block Pell Collector. And then we'll fight the one they block. So that worked out. Venerate Luxodon. Well, it would have been lethal if we would have drawn a land 
for the Arcbow Ranger to, you know, just kill the Luxodon and then attack for nine. Whenever it dies. I kind of want to just get rid of the Gideon and get rid of the Eagle. It's probably a bad call, though. Cleave the darkness. So we would have had lethal if we would have drawn a forest <clears throat> there, but it's not. It's not being. Uh, not not giving it to us that easily. It's not being too easy. Yeah, it really is tough to play against complete. You know, all instant speed like the last deck we played against. It really is tough. So blocking there means we get to trade. My sword is your end. We're basically trading the harpooner for that eagle. That's annoying. That's an, that's really annoying. So Knight of Autumn dying here does grow the Pelt Collector to be a 4-4. Another day, villain. So that's that's I not that bad, actually. Your champion, I believe in you. Because the Pelt Collector has Trample now, so they have to block with the Luxodon. That's not so bad. But still, yeah, again, any any of these turns, if we just draw the, the fourth of land, we just play Vivian and kill them. We're playing this is a 25 land deck that I'm playing. But yeah, more more land troubles for us. We would have had lethal with a land for a long time now. I will lend you my strength. But yeah, they're in a tough spot because they have to put four toughness in front of Pelt Collector. So, like, that Gideon was a good draw. If it wasn't a land, that was, like, our next best draw. We should have this.
Okay. One and one. Crowl Harpooners were amazing. Glad we have those. those. Cards. And the Gideons, honestly, were like amazing as well. Alright, so we still got turn three Gideon, thanks to Paradise Druid. Just the same deck, I guess. I will defend the weak at every opportunity. Prepare for battle. Oh, this is the same person. Okay, it's the same opponent. Well, I'll be kind of surprised if we win this one, to be honest. Because we do not we do not have a hand that stops a whole bunch of flyers this time. Unlike last time. I didn't really want to use the Voracious Hydra there, but the Hanged Executioner just gets to exile Gideon the next turn. Honestly, our, our hand is really bad. These Paradise Druids don't matter. So we'll, we'll see how we do. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's just less people playing the standard 2020, and with it being ranked, there's just, there's not that many people playing it with ranked, so yeah, you're, we get a lot of rematches with this format here. Good hand. GG's. This is not a good Paradise Druid matchup. Drawing the second or the third one. Do not help. Yeah, I don't I don't think the if you're I don't think the records matter at all. I don't think they check if you're O and O you try to play against other people O and O and one and O play against other people one and O. I don't think that matters at all. They just it's just by ranking. It just tries to find someone around the same rank as you, basically. Alright, waited just a second there. But then again my last I don't know if my last opponent's doing that. Hope, I hope they joined theirs already. Hopefully. All right, I think this is a different person.
We'll see. Is this gruel aggro? That's what it looks like. Maybe, uh, ah, Cruel Elemental Aggro. What kind of... I think I just played the double harpooner here. I'm not sure what kind of like artifacts or enchantments my opponent could have. That I really, that I want to save Night of Autumn for. I mean, I guess maybe Frenzy. Like Frenzy is the only thing I can think of. BS Toya. With the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the channel. Thanks to the Twitch Prime sub there. I think we block here, right? Yeah. Blocking does make my like my Vivian Arcbow Ranger worse. So if I don't block. I can like next turn put two, you know, play Arcbow Rangers, put two counters on this Harpooner. I guess blocking does just let them activate the Trailblazer though to kill, to kill it also though. Close your eyes. And listen to the sounds of the wild. My, my, how you've grown. So I could minus and just kill one of their creatures there with the harpooner. I went with the block there on the Trailblazer because I wanted to incentivize them to uh, use all their man, you know, to tap out again and not be able to play anything else. And I'm thinking Arcbow Ranger with Voracious Hydra should be able to finish this out. That seems like a pretty good combination. So what can I grab from over here? Let's see if you're worthy. Let me show you what was lost. <laughs> Stomping time. So I've, I've always I like the combination of Paradise Druid with the two Vivians. Because you just get to make it hexproof and trample and vigilance and everything. Uh, I was going to minus five. Go grab like Ronus. So it looks like. So they had three cards the whole time? Looks like they just had three cards. Hey, no need to try. Sorry about that. Just having, like, just flooding out there and not having anything. But GG's. Ooh. Hey, original Q. Yeah, that's what, that's what can happen with, um... 
Uh, okay, so you, you were a teamer and you had you had blue cards at like Risen Reef in hand. Gotcha, and you just had only green red mana. Yeah, our, our mana is not as good with this format. So okay, yeah, so I guess this means a, a wizard's employee. I've never played against a wizard's employee before. Hey, then no need to try getting that Twitch Prime resub back in here. Third month in a row. Thank you so much. Our sixth, sixth sub of the day. So going with the Pelt Collector first, so we could get to grow the Pelt Collector. This is a prime day for justice. <laughs> All right, getting bounced. I believe in you, friend. Gideon did not have proper ID. ID got bounced. Ooh, I like that. Every fight makes me stronger. Um. Yeah. Starting over is the only way. So good to start playing everything at instant speed. Good for Ambusher. Not great for Gideon, but... Charge into darkness. The mysteries of life are endless. I'm destructible. <clears throat> All right, so we have the the three mana available to activate for Growth Chamber Guardian. Turn with even more disciples. I'm just gonna do that right now before they can have like an instant speed removal spell for Growth Chamber Guardian. And yeah, they get to attack for two with this two two. And so if they have another Oath of Kaya, they could finish off the Black Blade. That's how life is, I suppose. I train and keep an open mind. Trying to say I can't play instant speed. Yeah, right? Corset Vivian would be way cooler than Corset um, Teferi. Have you ever lost a home? I will lend you my strength. So I really hope... I mean, basically how my opponent's going to win that, like... We have this all covered unless my opponent has 
really how they're going to win is like command the dread horde or like bullis citadel going crazy like those two cards because they have a whole lot of life especially with othakaya and everything Excellent timing. My strength gave out. Not dead yet. That's that's a way they can win this for sure too, though. I've got time. Yeah. So now all they need is like um, Kaya's wrath. You just let me know if you're up for round two. <sighs> they just give Watsi team members everything they need. You just get Elder Spell in a best of one. Definitely rigged. 100% rigged. Just that Elder Spell and then Kaya's Wrath. And now, do they have Command the Dread Horde now? Are you kidding me? Basically, the only way we could lose is, is if they had those three cards. <laughs> wow. Don't worry. I got this. Focus on what matters. Wow, definitely rigged. Prepare for battle. Unreal. Because they just don't have, like, one of those three, like, we're fine. Even if they just have Kaya's Wrath and Command the Dread Horde, like, we're still probably okay with, like, the three mana walkers and all the cards we had in hand. Even if they just had Elder Spell and Command, we were still fine because we had all those creatures in play. Like, they had to have all three of those cards. Even even if it was just Elder Spell and, and Kaya's Wrath, we were still okay. But literally, I'd have all three of those. <laughs> Sadly, there's no emo for good game, you cheater. I know, they're just just bumping down. There's here in Mythic, just bumping down everybody's ratings. It's a jerk move. Our deck is certainly weak to, um, yep, they get to pick whatever cards they want to draw. At least that's what it seems like. We're certainly weak to Feather, you know, like the curve out of Arcanist Feather and just a bunch of spells.
Why would they just throw away their 1-3? It's literally just threw away their 1-3. I mean, my opponent is just destroying me, and it doesn't matter, but why? But why? Must be nice just to be able to just throw away creatures and and not even care. Must be nice. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have any removal for feather. Not at this point of the game. So that's eleven. Puts me down to six. So that feather kills me the next turn. We can go lifelink. Gideon Jura, at your service. So if they have another shock, if I attack with both creatures and they have another shock, I die. But I think we have to put the pressure on them. Your light will cleave the darkness. We can't we can't play a slow game and win this anyway. Okay. No, we weren't dead to Gur for battle because we had lifelink. We were gaining four life, but we had to chump block the other creature. Yep, of course they had another shock. Of course. Alright, so our deck our deck was felt better than two and four. Um honestly. Yeah, we did go two and four, but our deck felt better than that. I, I actually liked how our deck felt, to be honest. Uh, it did feel pretty good. The That Esper match was just completely ridiculous that we lost that. So, you know, otherwise that would have been three and three. And then even, even like with, you know, turn three feather, um, you know, we still put a, a good amount of pressure on them. And if they don't have that other, that last removal spell... Um, we're looking at out racing them and uh, like let's say they just don't have a removal spell there like we're we're ahead honestly but they had but I had to I had to do the two attacks to make to have us be ahead there um, but yeah our opponent had the removal oh well um, but there we go so that's Selesnia midrange we're going to move, move on to our next deck here with Orzhov Sacrifice up next. Um, but this is a fun deck to play. I liked it. It was a good one. So if you're watching on you, later on YouTube, you'll let me know what you think of the deck and everything there. And of course, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there as well. But thank you so much for watching Selesnia Midrange in Standard 2020. And I'll see you for the next video.